Alright, so E3 is just coming to a close, alongside the flood of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate gameplay that came with it. So I think this is a better time than ever to begin to analyse the gameplay footage, along with the information provided by the VIP players to understand just how exactly this game is going to play. In part 1, I'll be mostly focusing on the universal mechanics of the game, rather than characters. Overall, the game more or less looks something like 50% Smash 4, 20% Melee and 30% its own new style. It very clearly appears to be fundamentally based on Smash 4's gameplay style. It doesn't have a ton of Melee's clearly quick and creative movement and combos, nor much of Brawl's slow-paced, spacing-based gameplay, but a mix between them, so... Smash 4. But despite this, it was made very clear during the presentation that traditional defensive options outside of shielding have been decently nerfed. Especially with the new staleness and dodging, and gameplay has been sped up a great deal, leaning more towards melee speed-wise in advantage, but looking eerily like Smash 4 during the neutral stage. While I feel that neutral will slowly drift more towards melee style as we continue to see more and more top-level gameplay, because of the new movement options such as cancelling a dash with any normal, the new perfect shielding mechanics, and the new dash dancing we have not seen utilised much if at all at the Invitational. Moves overall look faster, and lag lower and damage higher, meaning the stocks are likely to be taken much faster than Smash 4, maybe even coming close to melee levels of stock taking. It appears that straight up true combos have been reduced in strength along with made harder to get, mostly because grab combos seem to be nerfed. We can see here MK Leia being unable to get much from his grabs at low percents outside of Nera Sonic, as opposed to Smash 4. This may also, in part, be because of the way gravity and momentum works in this game, which I'll get to later. Smash Force ledge mechanics are back, and it seems like ledge tromping into backer is going to be a good strategy again. In addition, we can also see what appears to be a 2 frame here by Nairo, with his incredible down tilt into bomb combo, so I guess 2 frames are back along with all their weirdness. But in noting this, ledge snap in general seems to be shorter, so no more magnetic hands. Alright, let's move on to the more controversial stuff. Jumping appears to kinda send you up super fast, give you a small, almost float-like motion before falling down like a regular character. Or a regular fast faller, because it looks like everyone falls pretty fast now. This means you can probably follow up on vertical combos easier now, since you can reach the peak of your jump much faster. But it also means that rising aerials might not really be a thing. I doubt you could drag someone upwards with a move like Mewtwo's Nair in Smash 4, or hit someone close to the ground with an aerial before continuing with your momentum to follow the knockback and follow up, without the use of a second jump like Mario does with his up air strings in Smash 4. Also, it looks like knockback is weird now. Similar to jumping, when you get hit, you go from 0 to 100 real quick, before going back from 100 to 0 just as fast. Visually, this makes the game look a lot more snappy, which is something we also see in the animations, jumps, and a bunch of other places in this game. Albeit looking kinda weird and up to subjective taste. But mechanically, this means, similar to what I said about jumping, it's probably going to be a lot harder to follow someone's momentum. But it also looks like the combo process is going to be a lot easier, since your opponent will stop for a little bit in the air, meaning you have time to space attacks, get the sweet spot, or know the exact location to go to follow up, rather than having to predict their momentum. I don't think that jumping and knockback changes really nerf combos necessarily, just to make them different. But speaking of combos and nerfs, well, yeah they look nerfed. But not because of any of the mechanical changes, it just looks like knockback has been generally increased and made combos less strong. Also, wave dashing's in the game, right? See? See right there? That, that's good, right? Right? Alright, in all seriousness, wave dashing looks a little broke. Like, I guess you can do it, but with a new way jumping works and air dodging having end lag, roughly 16 frames of it, it's not going to be anywhere near as useful as it was in Melee. The problem is that when you jump, because you gain height so quickly, even a few frames of delay in air dodging and you'll already be sky high, meaning your air dodge will take significant time to reach the ground and then have to get through another 16 frames of landing lag. Essentially, wave dashing probably won't be used to extend combos due to its speed issues, along with how knockback now works and the general increase in knockback we have seen thus far. But defensively? It looks like it could be a solid option for retreating, almost functioning as an aerial perfect pivot maybe. Along with this, wave landing seems alright, especially since you don't have to deal with the jumping issues holding up wave dashing. Now, moving on to the more obscure and minor things you might not have noticed. A lot of character animations and hitboxes have been changed, in particular, there appear to be very few circular attacks, unlike previous games. 
and I know this is a really weird thing to note, but what I mean is, have a look at DK Sphere. It looks more like a vertical oval rather than a long circular sweep, like it was in Smash 4. And Marth's Jab has a more horizontal oval looking hitbox, as opposed to its more circular one in Smash 4. So what does this mean? My take on it is that many moves are going to be made more directional, and preventing players from being able to use one move to cover many options and positions. For example, let's take Marth's Jab. Before it could function as a spacing tool as well as a small anti-air, because it had a large circular range that covered above him as well, now it looks like it will just function as a spacing tool, not so much an anti-air anymore. I could just be overanalyzing it, but I do believe that this will at the very least have a small impact on the way we handle move choice. Overall, I'm super excited to see what this game is going to bring and I can't wait to play it at the end of the year. I hope you enjoyed this video too. If you have anything you noticed that I haven't mentioned, please let me know in the comments or by sending me a DM on Discord. And if you're interested in seeing part 2, where I'll look at individual characters and their general changes to moves, attributes and overall gameplay style, please consider subscribing and opting in to receive notifications for when I upload. I plan to go all out with Smash Ultimate content from now on. Thanks for watching.